This year, the U.S. team is a serious medal contender in Nordic Combined, a sport that combines ski jumping with cross-country skiing. U.S. hopefuls Todd Ludwig and Bill DeMong, along with George Tuthill, a physicist funded by the National Science Foundation, explain the principles of physics behind the long, soaring jumps. Hurtling down a snow-covered ramp at speeds well over 60 miles an hour, jumping off the edge and launching into the air, then landing two football fields away from where you started. Ski jumping looks pretty simple, right? In fact, each step of a jump from takeoff to landing requires a complex manipulation of forces, gravity, drag, lift. And if you can think of an airplane trying to land on a, on a runway, we're pretty much doing the exact same thing. Todd Lodwick is planning to compete in his fifth Winter Olympics with the U.S. Nordic combined team. For the aerial portion of the event, Lodwick knows that controlling his body position will mean the difference between a gold medal and disaster. I think the number one thing in ski jumping is actually flexibility. Uh, you have to be very flexible so that you can get into a position that you feel comfortable and powerful enough to get out of. During his jump, a ski jumper has to put his body in two completely different positions. One for coming down the ramp, another for gliding through the air. They have two contradictory missions. The first is on the in run, and just before the takeoff is to gain the maximum amount of speed. In the air, they're trying to maximize the effect of the air on them, maximize the lift that's produced by their body and skis. As the skier comes down the ramp, or in run, the air around him creates resistance, also known as drag. To minimize drag, the skier will streamline his posture. That involves the chest parallel to the snow as much as possible, the head down, and the arms behind them. But when the skier reaches the takeoff, he has to dramatically readjust his body leaping forward and upward simultaneously, all in a tenth of a second. When they're coming down the ramp, they have to minimize the air drag. They want the highest speed possible. But after they leave, they need lift. They want to fly like a bird. Once in the air, the skier repositions his body to take advantage of lift, the upward force that helps him glide through the air. The lift that a ski jumper gets. Formation. The biggest change in ski jumping over the last 20 years definitely has to be the V-style. When you see videos of old, old school ski jumping, they often have their skis parallel and underneath them. And originally, that was what was considered stylish. But what we learned uh, in the late 80s and early 90s is that by separating the skis into a V-shape, you were able to get 30% more lift. That's because higher pressure air under the skier pushing upward has a wider surface area on which to act. It's the force of the air on the base of the skis and the chest that really uh, provides the lift. It's hard to believe, but the first skiers to use the V formation, at least for a few seconds, he came as close as a human being will ever get to flying.